One of the sectors, or actually one of the themes that you've been excited about in India is the private entrepreneurial capital. Mm. Uh, you know, and you believe that India has the ability and the capacity to create world-class companies, whether it's Absolutely. the auto sector, it's the banking sector, fintech, uh, you know, now is, is, is one of the hot spaces that's opening up in India. Uh, how, how do you read what's happening within corporate India today and our ability to continue to churn out uh, world-class companies. I mean, we have world-class entrepreneurs, but we're still far lower in the pecking order when it comes to creating world-class companies and world-class brands. Yeah, I, I'm very confident in that, though, because I look at the talent at the end of the day, and you see a lot of talent from here that is in global companies, more and more and more as, as we go through it. And if I think about digitization, mm. which is one of the digitization and analytics, one of the biggest discontinuities or trends going on in the world, this is the heartland of the capability to be able to do it. And you see India's driving innovation for McKinsey in as well, right? Pardon? For India's driving innovation for McKinsey absolutely. as well. This is our, like, if our largest single concentration of the digital design people are in India. This is a, a source of the tech. Working for companies, by mm. the way, all over the world, in Europe, in South America, in the United States, because of the talent that's here. But I think this digitization... Like what's, you know, what you see going on in the, t in the telecom space, mm. what you see going on in the banking space, what you see therefore going on in the industrial space with the Internet of Things is going to allow companies here to be able to be even more significant. Um, so I, I think it's a matter of time. It's, it's going to happen. Mm. You, 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 the, there's no doubt that there is the leadership capability. I think it's then about the scale. And with this, that trend, digital analytics, is right, it's a tailwind from mm. here. So... I'm, I think we're going to see more uh, global champions coming from this part of the world. Maybe if I could make yeah, one sure. comment on that, Shreen. I you think I'm that. exaggerating? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you some facts. Uh, if you look at the 100 largest multinational companies that came out of emerging markets, yes. India today has eight of them. Mm. Guess what's China? Mm. 41. 41, yeah, that's what I said, yeah. And I think we've done, we've done some numbers. Our conviction is that there is no reason why we cannot have 30 of these companies in the next decade from India. Mm. And if I look at sector by sector, you look at today, just an example of generics, pharmaceuticals. Yeah. You could debate it, number one, number two, I think that company is going to be out of India. Mm. You look at IT services, yes, there are a few big boys out there, Accenture and IBM Global Services and so forth. I would bet you, I think there's one of the Indian companies has a good shot yeah. mm. at being in the top three, if not the number one. Mm. I look at uh, what some of the automotive companies are doing in India. Well, Maruti, you can debate, is it Indian or not? But look mm. at that, the scale, mm. the ambition. They're a global company out of India. Yeah. You look at the telecom companies, mm. they're running the largest data networks in the world. Again, depends on how you define scale. Sure. I think we are optimistic. If anything, I think to me the strength of India mm. is actually the confidence and the enterprise in the private sector. Dominic, let yeah. me ask you about what you're seeing uh, play out uh, on the world map today. I mean, there's this heady mix of populism and protectionism. Mm. Uh, and, and, you know, whether it's the World Bank or the IMF, uh, they do argue that perhaps the threat has receded. It hasn't receded completely, but it mm. has receded in comparison to, you know, the, the height of the Trump rhetoric, for instance, uh, yeah. uh, during the presidential campaign. But how are you seeing the forces of globalization change in the context of what we're seeing happen? Well, I definitely I think it had a, you know, a hiccup with with the Trump view. Right? That's it, a hiccup. Okay, hiccup. Well, a hiccup or a, <laughs> I, I was going to say a stall. Year ago, I was catching myself. Right. I don't because I think there's an inevitability though of and look at what's going with the TPP. Mm. You've got a, an effort, a groundswell to try and figure something out. Yeah, it's kind of like the minus rest of the, the world, US, yes. Minus the, but the rest of the world's trying to figure it out and either say. We got to hold our breath for mm. three years, or hopefully, you know, not. But it could be seven years. You know, we have to hold our. But it's not forever. It's not a. And if you look at the, so the physical trade flows have been mm. affected by that, but the digital trade flows have not. They yeah. continue to accelerate. Mm. And you know, inevitably, with technology, I think that's just a, a bigger flywheel for even more uh, trade mm. as you move it. You know, e-commerce platforms are allowing allowing small, yeah. medium-sized businesses in. Canada, Australia, and Europe to yeah. attach themselves into the Chinese system. Mm. They can, they've now got a platform. It's, it's a, so, and I think people are looking for how, to, how can I do that here? Yeah. And so the, the, I, I think it's a natural act. It's like a gravitational force mm. for globalization. It's, mm. wh I, it's where I think the natural pushes, the technology is going to accelerate that. But I also don't discount political pushback. And that's, my worry on a, on a hiccup to a stall 
is if everyone then starts to counter the U.S., mm. right, and say, like NAFTA, I'm yeah. very worried about what's happening in mm. NAFTA. That's not, that negotiation's not going well, mm. right? And that's a, that's a pretty big part of the global yeah. economy that's just yeah. in, that, in that area. If, mm. if the U.S. and China start to get into a spat, mm. I mean, the U.S. is so significant that it, it, it can cause sure. more than a hiccup right. and a stall. And if everyone mm. starts pulling back, mm. then we're in trouble. You know, since we're talking about Trump and we're talking about global trade, uh, the U.S. is, is uh, on the cusp of, uh, of taking forward this big tax plan. Yeah. Uh, how is that likely to, to reshape uh, trade and investment? Because the, the fear is that, you know, with the significant tax cut that's being announced in the U.S., it could potentially hurt uh, inflows into emerging markets like India. Yeah, I, I definitely also think the repatriation issue and money, that, that will definitely have an effect, right? Where it's, you know, people are going to, multinationals will bring back, U.S. multinationals, yeah. more capital back into uh, the U.S. I think it'll make the U.S. a more attractive place to be able to invest and, and for, for talent. So there definitely will be that effect. But it, when you see growth rates mm. in India and China and Indonesia, parts of Africa, from an investment point of view, those are very significant too. So compelling I, enough to, to, compelling. to stick. I, I really yeah. do. I, I think they they will. I, I just think it. What it's going to do is, I think it's going to force other countries to think about their tax mm. policies. It's mm. so significant that when you think about your, the corporate tax rates and mm. you think about personal income tax rates and so forth, simplicity of tax systems. I think there'll be some. It'll cause repercussions that way, uh, but but. I, don't, I think a lot of the growth is being factored into the markets right now. I think right. people are assuming mm. that the, the, uh, the tax plan will go through. Um, that, that, are, you I, confident, I think, are you confident that know. it will? I, don't, I, I'm, I, I, I think it will. I, don't, I have no idea. Like, right. I'm not an expert in that sort right. of thing. It's not, there hasn't been, but, but I think there's a lot of desire to try and get one thing mm. done. Mm. The, this year, and it would be a pretty big thing and to do. And perhaps that's, that's what it's going to be. Yeah. But, you know, Gotham, just to take that point forward, uh, from a competitiveness point of view, and there is this business of bringing down the GST rates, 28% was too high, and now we're sort of seeing that list being pruned as a possibility of 18 and, 5, and, and 12 collapsing as well, maybe to about 14 or 15%. Uh, but from a competitiveness standpoint, outside of tax, what else do you believe that uh, India will need to do? You raise a good point. I think for all the talk about ease of doing business, I think we need a lot more focus on cost of doing business mm. in India. Just take logistics cost. I think we as an economy, I think our logistics cost is about 15% of the economy. And I think most well-performing economies, high-performing economies would have that in the region of about 6%. Mm. So think about it. We are paying 10% more on logistics. Now, what does that do to your business model if you're a high logistics oriented industry? So I think I just take that as an example because yeah. we think you could bring down logistics costs from 14% to 8 or 9%. Now, just take that as an example. Yeah. That requires you to fundamentally overhaul your railroad mix. It mm. requires you to fundamentally take advantage of coastal economic zone development in India. Sure. And we've done some research on this, and we think the, you know there are a whole bunch of... If you just took advantage of our yeah. coastal zone and connectivity right. and you shift the railroad modal mix that is out of line in India... Mm you can make a lot of logistics businesses much more competitive. Mm. So well, this has been Arvind Panagaria's big idea at the Niti Aayog when he was there. It is one yeah. of the ideas, and like everything else, I think our country is not short of ideas. I think <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's implementation a, and it's execution. execution. Yes. It's the execution. I think my Dom and I were talking about this morning. I think we are all intellectually very strong. I think we have very bright people in India. We know what to do. I think we, we just don't know how to do it. We can't get it done fast <laughs> enough. We can't get it done fast enough. Okay. Well, let me talk to you about uh, plans for McKinsey in India. 25 years. Uh, uh, what next? What, what is it that we can expect in terms of hiring, in terms of how you intend to continue to, to leverage the uh, India's strength, India's capabilities for McKinsey globally? Well, I think, it, it, as uh, one of our colleagues, Kevin Sneeder, said, it's sort of the, the, the end of the beginning if you will, is 25 years. I mean, I just think looking ahead, we're so excited because the one is the, the companies that are here and the organizations and what, what they're going to do. And to be able to be hopefully a part of that is going to be a significant opportunity. But then it's also the talent, as yeah. you're, you're getting at. This is such a huge source of talent for McKinsey globally, and it will remain so. 
It's our largest office in the world. Mm. We think we have over 3,000 people. A lot of our new capabilities on the, on the digital design, our knowledge network is here. Um, and that, and we, we just are, everywhere we look, we find amazing people. And so this will continue to be a big, a, a very big source of, of talent for McKinsey globally. Mm -hmm. I, I just, and I, and I, th I think it, we'll, you'll see us in more cities. Um, you'll see us uh, doing, we're doing quite different work, more work where we, we get paid when the results get in. That's the type we like the most. Right. It's not rep writing reports or things like that. It's the, so the way we work, the type of people we mm. bring in, um, again, I said this whole digital and analytics side, yeah. which is where this uh, country is moving. So it's, uh, I, again, I'd say it's the, it's the uh, end of the beginning and, and to, for a, very, you know, we have, we have high expectations and high ambition. That, that's good to hear, but how's the world of consulting changed in the last 25 years? I remember reading, and you said that one of the first tasks that you got at McKinsey was to, to, to put chicken pieces into a yeah, lunchbox? That's right. Is, is, that, well, that's, yes, right. That, that's, that's, not, that's not how you still hire people, is no, it? No, no, no. No, it was to figure out, it was to figure out how many pieces of go into chicken a should go into a lunchbox. Lunch yeah, and it was, I think it was five or four, and it took me, this is my pro, six months to figure that out. If we went to that client today, first they would laugh at me for saying, I can't believe we paid you to do that. <laughs> and they'd probably, instead of saying six months, we'd probably do it in three minutes. Because th there wasn't a lot of, I mean, I'm almost getting back to the slide rule time. That's how old I am in, in the system. So what's changed is, you know, almost every dimension of what we do. We have to take our own medicine. We love mm. to tell other organizations how they have to change because the world's going yes. faster. Yeah. We're, we're talking about this a lot. The, this, the metabolic rate of the world is going up. Mm. And that means it has to for us. And so we are, you know, 50% of what we do today didn't exist five years ago as, in terms of capabilities. It just, and I don't know if that's fast enough or yeah. not. Or maybe some people think it's too much, <laughs> uh. McKinsey. I actually think we have to continue to, to reinvent ourselves mm. to be relevant. So that, and this uh, office is a place, that's why I used to always say, and I still do, I come here because these guys don't ask for permission, they ask for forgiveness. <laughs> And I, so I always find out what what is going on it's that we can then learn, <laughs> and then we do it. We take we take the learnings here and we use it in other parts of the world. But the innovation is really really important in in how we serve clients and how we find people, how we train people, right? All of that. So what was the last thing that you asked for forgiveness for? Uh, well, I might do that tomorrow. I think. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but I think that's a that's an important point because you know India. You know, somebody told me once, when your aspirations are more than resources, mm. you know, you have to innovate. Mm. And I think that's the India story. If you look at I get inspired by all my entrepreneurial clients because yeah. that's what they do all the time. And I think Don's point, I think we would have to do the same thing. I think 25% uh, of what we are doing in India now are in what we call the new McKinsey capabilities, mm. data analytics, growth, restructuring. So pace of change in India is pretty fast too. Well, as they say, yeah. necessity is the mother of invention, and we're yeah. seeing a lot of that play out here in India. Dominic Barton, Gotham, appreciate you joining us. Congratulations once again on completing 25 years in India, and we wish you the very best of luck for the road ahead. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Well, with that, it is time for us to wrap up this CNBC TV 18 special. From all of us here, for now, goodbye. Many thanks for watching.